If you've been watching the channel for a while, you guys know that I absolutely love Keon Coleman. While scouts were definitely split on him, and a lot of them had a negative opinion on him, I thought all the Keon Coleman hype was completely justified. He made highlight level catch after highlight level catch, was one of the best athletes in the entire country, and it looks like the kind of player that could completely dominate if given the right coaching staff in the right situation. Keon Coleman's potential is literally limitless, and he is someone that I was so excited to watch at the next level. He didn't end up getting taken in the first round, but last night, there was no time wasted, as he was taken with the first overall pick in the second round by the Buffalo Bills. Coleman is going to be a guy who translates right away, and in my opinion, will be an instant contributor, but who the heck is Keon Coleman? Some of you guys probably don't know much about him, as at one point, he was a two-way star. He was both a football and basketball phenom, made his way out of a really tough childhood, became an early star at Michigan State, had nearly 50 offers coming out of the portal, and then this past year, completely dominated for the Florida State Seminoles. In today's video, I'm going to introduce you to Keon Coleman. We're going to go through his story and his journey, talk about who this guy is, and how he fits with the Bills moving forward. But before we get started, if you're a big fan of college football, be sure to subscribe to the channel, leave a like if you want to support today's video, and let me know what player or prospect I should cover next. I hope to do a ton of videos like this over the next month or two, as I always love these stories and these player profiles, so be sure to drop your favorite draft pick down below, or a guy you think deserves to be covered. Now let's get started and talk about the insane rise of Keon Coleman. In order to understand how Coleman got to this point, we first need to go back in time. Keon would overcome incredible odds as his journey began in Opelousas, Louisiana. I really hope I said that right. It's a lightly populated town that's approximately 50 miles away from Baton Rouge, and apparently it has a significant crime rate. He ended up growing up one of five children and was raised by a single mother. His mom became the rock of his life, and she really helped make him into the person he is today. She wanted what was best for her children, and she did everything to keep them safe from all the danger around them. She ended up putting them in both sports and community programs, and that became a great outlet for Keon and all his other siblings. His grandmother also helped him out, and they actually had some lucky NFL tie. We recently found this out during the draft process, but his cousin is none other than former Oklahoma and current Dallas Cowboys wide receiver, CeeDee Lamb. Now I know where the insane athleticism came from. I don't know how much of a role Lamb played in anything, but that was worth noting. As an 8th grader, Coleman would finally enter into the game of football, as he had already become a big-time basketball star. According to all the articles I read, his road to playing college sports in the town of Opelousas was going to be very difficult. A director of a local youth organization said, quote, There's a lot of crime. He had a ton of hardships, and most kids would struggle with it. He made it out solely because of his mom. His parents were definitely tough on him, as there was one story in particular. After Keon got a C on a test, he was not allowed to play outside for a month. Eventually, when he arrived at Opelousas High School, he was the next big thing and was considered one of those super athlete players. He'd play his first two years, but as a junior in 2019, Keon would be pushed into the mainstream. He ended up finishing with 35 catches for 1,143 yards and 22 touchdowns. That's an absurd 33 yards per catch. But he was more than that. His coach said, quote, you can see things on film. But to witness it in real life, the speed, the ease, the fluidness, it takes it to a whole different level. After getting a ton of offers, he decided to narrow his list to both Oklahoma and Kansas. He eventually chose the Kansas Jayhawks over the Sooners and was going to play both sports there. I'm sure Coach Self was thrilled with that. He said, quote, I've got a good connection with the Kansas coaching staff. They're going to use me in the best way possible to get me to the NFL, and I feel like I can change the culture over there. It's worth noting that at the time, Les Miles was the head coach. That's probably the connection here. It's also funny that Jamar Chase was also committed to Kansas at one point. Imagine if both Keon and Jamar were on that team. That would be pretty crazy. While he did have plenty of offers in football hype, he was actually seen more as a basketball player. He said, quote, To be honest, I always felt like I was the best to step on the court. I always had the mindset that I was going to make it. He was a legit superstar on the hardwood, as he scored a career-high 63 points his senior year against Sacred Heart High School, and averaged 26 points per game. But going back to football, he wanted to be the cornerstone of a program, and he was going to be able to do that at Kansas. He said, quote, They'll get me the ball whenever and however they can, as many times as possible. I'm the type of player that can go to a school like Kansas and make it a bigger football school. I'm going to start the trend. But ultimately, that was short-lived, as Coleman would eventually decommit from Kansas, and every single school was back on the table. Maybe the local school would go after him? That was a question many were asking. Being from Louisiana, LSU would have been a no-brainer for Keon Coleman, especially since all the recent wide receiver success they had. But his love for basketball would ultimately get in the way. 
He wished to pursue both sports, and as a result, he could not get a scholarship to play for the Tigers in football because I guess Will Wade didn't want to offer him a basketball scholarship. I guess ultimately LSU didn't even need him either, as they had Brian Thomas and Malik Neighbors anyways. There was one moment when everyone knew Keon was going to be a future stud, as he scored five touchdowns in the first round of their playoffs as they beat a team called Hamilton Christian by a score of 69-0. to So, now that he was decommitted from Kansas and LSU wasn't willing to offer him, where was he going to go? Well, eventually he signed with Michigan State, and he would be able to play both football and basketball. Mel Tucker landed a stud on the football field, and Tom Izzo was going to allow him to play on the hardwood. He said, quote, It was the perfect place for me, honestly. It was the perfect place for me to go be a better man, get away from Louisiana a little bit, and experience life and growth for myself. Coleman ended up with more than 40 offers, and apparently chose Michigan State over Tulane. Honestly, this is all just really bizarre to me, as how do you have 40 offers, and how does it come down to Michigan State and Tulane? No offense to Tulane, they've been good the last few years, but there's absolutely no reason why that should be his other school. Maybe there was other stuff going on behind the scenes, but all in all, this is just a really weird recruitment for me. Going back to him though, Michigan State was getting a great player and a great person. His head coach said, quote, Keon is a hard worker for a guy as talented as he is. He isn't missing reps, and he's always in the weight room doing what we ask him to do. He sets a great example from his effort on and off the field, and he is extremely competitive. According to 24-7 Sports, Keon Coleman was a four-star recruit, the number 61 wide receiver, and the 377th best player in the class of 2021. So how would he end up doing at Michigan State? Well, let's take a look. Luckily for Keon, he would pick the right time to go to Michigan State. They were fresh off of hiring Mel Tucker in 2020, and after a bad 2020 season, they would have a breakout year in 2021. Led by quarterback Peyton Thorne and superstar running back Kenneth Walker, Michigan State would absolutely blow up. Unfortunately though, Keon really wouldn't do much his freshman year. He ended up appearing in four total games. He had a catch against Youngstown State in Maryland, and then caught his first career touchdown in a blowout loss to Ohio State. He'd also appear in their bowl game against number 12 Pitt, and for the year, he had 5 catches for 30 yards and a touchdown. And on the year, he had 7 catches for 50 yards and a touchdown. Going into 2022, Jalen Naylor was now gone, and he would probably be the second best wide receiver compared to Jaden Reed. Coleman would end up having his breakout season, as in his first game against Western Michigan, he had nearly 100 yards and a touchdown. Flash forward to two weeks later, on the road against Washington, in one of the most highly anticipated non-conference games of the year, Coleman caught 9 passes for 116 yards and 2 total touchdowns. That was his breakout performance, and he still had 3 more really notable games. He had 5 catches for 79 yards and 2 touchdowns in an overtime win over Wisconsin, ended up having 8 catches for 107 yards and a touchdown against Indiana, and then had 5 catches for 155 yards and a touchdown against Michigan. Coleman was playing well against some of the better teams on his slate, and in total, he finished with 58 catches for 798 yards and 7 touchdowns. Coleman was now somewhat of a breakout player, and his combo of size, speed, and physicality made him one of the more intriguing wide receivers in the country. Part of this, though, was because he finally decided to stick to football. He decided to put away the basketball shoes and said, quote, I mean, yeah, it was tough for me to not play basketball, but at the end of the day, your body is your business. With Jaden Reed leaving the program for the NFL, Keon Coleman was expected to take over as the number one receiver in 2023 and would probably make himself an NFL draft pick. Except that would never happen, as he would decide to enter the transfer portal. He said, quote, Dear Spartan Nation, I know you already have seen the rumors and speculation, and yes, they are true. After careful consideration, I've decided to enter the transfer portal. Despite several offers from big-time programs, including USC, Ole Miss, and Oklahoma, he ended up choosing Florida State as his next location. It was also rumored he had nearly 50 offers. When asked what made him choose Florida State, he said, quote, This was a dream. I ain't lying to you. There was really nothing Coach Norvell could say, and the tape speaks for itself. All the guys we got out of the portal, I was like, why would I not want to go there and adapt to an NFL-like role? Playing with an upper-tier quarterback was at the top of Coleman's wish list, and he would be paired alongside Jordan Travis. He was also, in my opinion, paired along one of the craziest receivers in the country in Johnny Wilson, who was a 6'7 freak of nature. Combining those three and Trey Benson, and Florida State was going to be dangerous. He ended up having an immediate impact in 2023 with them, as after all the offseason drama between Brian Kelly and Mike Norvell, Florida State would make him eat his words. In week one in New Orleans against number five LSU, Coleman would have the best game of his career, catching nine passes for 122 yards and three touchdowns. He showed he was completely dominant and did whatever he wanted on the field. 
After that, he had a touchdown against Southern Miss before he'd have another memorable game against Clemson. In that game, he caught five passes for 86 yards and two touchdowns, and one of those was a walk-off winner in overtime. Keon Coleman had quickly become a Florida State legend in the month of September, but from there, he would somewhat die off. He did have a huge game against Syracuse, catching nine passes for 140 yards and a touchdown, and did have a two-touchdown performance against Wake Forest, but after mid-October, he never had over 100 yards receiving and only went over four catches one time. As the end of the year approached, unfortunately, Jordan Travis went down with an injury, but it still looked like Florida State was going to get into the playoff. After they beat number 14 Louisville in the ACC Championship, Florida State was expected to punch their ticket, but then the committee pulled a surprise and decided to not put the Seminoles in. This made a lot of people angry, and honestly, it didn't make any sense. But that is exactly what would happen, and Keon Coleman's career was over. He opted out of their bowl game against Georgia, and on the year, he caught 50 passes for 658 yards and 11 touchdowns. From there, he became one of the more controversial wide receivers in the country, as scouts were completely split on how he would translate to the NFL. Some think he was the next end kill Harry, and others think he was the next Megatron. Either way, many were considering him as the fourth best receiver behind Marvin Harrison Jr., Malik Neighbors, and Roma Dunze, and in my opinion, that was the correct take. If I was a GM, I would take him fourth overall, and that's because of everything he brings to the table. One scout said, quote, After the catch, Coleman combines explosiveness, speed, one-cut agility, contact balance, and physicality to completely torment defensive backs. He can be used on screens, sweeps, drags, and slants, and has a ton of ability in the open space. He also has the ideal physical measurables, as he's quick, tall, built, and also extremely explosive. There's really nothing that Keon Coleman couldn't do, but many will point to his somewhat lack of production, and at times the potential questionable motor. Those are the two biggest knocks I've heard on his game, but I still expected him to be taken in the first round. Ultimately, 32 teams would pass on Coleman, but the 33rd team would take him. With the first pick in the second round, the Buffalo Bills decided to try to find their replacement for Stephon Diggs and found it in Keon Coleman. Daniel Jeremiah said that Coleman may have the best highlight reel in this year's draft class and that he has the potential to thrive in the end zone. He'll definitely have a large role right away and he'll get to use those basketball skills to his advantage. Couple that with the ability to return kicks and come out of the backfield and Coleman, in my opinion, has unlimited potential and was a tremendous pick. While he could definitely be a bust, or maybe someone like DGB, I also think he has unlimited potential and could be the best wide receiver on that team and one of the best in the league. We'll find out a lot this fall, but for me, the Bills got the steal of the draft, and Keon Coleman is going to excite. But what do you guys think? If you're a Florida State, Michigan State, or Bills fan, what do you think of Keon Coleman, and how do you think he'll do in the NFL? Also, be sure to let me know another prospect I should cover in my next video. And before you go, don't forget to leave a like, subscribe if you're new, and check out all my other videos on the end screen. Hope to see you guys again soon, but until next time, peace.